Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. Uh, the Matt Lagore Show is about business, entrepreneurism, inspiration, all those things, sometimes wrapped all together as one, sometimes separately. But those are the things I like to talk about. I have people on my show who are up to those things, people on the show who are inspirational to me, people on the show who are my friends. It doesn't matter. I have people on who I find interesting, and I hope you do too. Uh, now, as we're filming the show today, it is uh, June 22nd, which is the day after the first day of summer. It's also the last day of school in North Reading uh, and time of graduations and all that stuff that goes on this time of year. The air is filled with so much optimism and so much hope and so much excitement, as it should. It's the beginning of summer, and in New England, summer, you know, it doesn't last that long. You know, and I can't help but think about how I used to feel at that time and used to feel so excited. Um, one thing I never liked was that the longest day of the year was the first day of summer. It always felt to me like the longest day of the year should be the last day of summer and celebration. But it's the way the calendar works. It has nothing to do with what I think. But that's the way I used to feel, which used to then roll me into sort of a negative thought of, boy, Summer's going to be over before you know it, and we're going to be back in school, and easily, quickly, summer was over, and that optimism would evaporate. Now, it kind of made me think about life and how life can feel that way, too. Like, when you're, getting, when you're a kid, life is great, life is fun. You graduate from high school or you graduate from college. The whole world is in front of you. So many great things you're going to do, so many things you want to be, and time goes on and you lose that light a bit. And, you know, how do you recapture it? And is there anything wrong with feeling that way? Is it natural? Is it something that happens? I think that however you feel, you generate that. If you feel badly, you generate it. If you feel happy, you're generating that too. So today on my show, I have one of my very best friends. We've been friends for many years. He's also been uh, a mentor to me. He listens to my problems. Uh, he gives me advice, always good advice. Uh, my friend, Hack Pop. Hack, welcome to the show. Thanks, Matt. Great to be with you today. Was that a good introduction? That was fantastic. I mean, it's just filled with enthusiasm. And I, I, I don't know, were you, uh, did you invite me because I'm like one of the oldest people you know? Is, is that Yeah, you're the oldest person the topic? I know. Yeah, yeah the oldest I, person uh, I know, and I wanted everyone to see you. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you are, you've been a great friend to me. We, we, we met about 20 years ago, and we immediately hit it off. It was, it was like, like that. Yeah. Uh, you agree? It was just like that. It's always been like yeah. that. And we have a lot, very, a lot in common, and one of the things that has been great for me is since you are a few years older than me, you've kind of been through something that I might be starting to go through, and you can kind of talk me through it. Um, you can kind of like say, you know what, it's really going to be all right. I went through that too, you know. And it's all, it, by the way, I want you to know, it always has helped. It always made me feel like, I remember one time I was having a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and you broke it down so fast for me. You were like, this is when I, you know, you, you, well, you, let's see, you just got married, you bought a house, you're having a baby. Yeah, those, those things, you, you just started your new business. Uh, th those things are very stressful. That's probably what's going on. And, and all of those things in North Reading, by the way. Yes. So it was, you know, quite a coincidence. And uh, I, I actually, I didn't know you were paying attention, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I know it doesn't <laughs> seem like I listen, which most, I'd say half the time I don't. But the other half of the time I do. Uh, you know, but no, I am paying attention. Well, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you, you know this, but I, I just turned 70 within the past six months. It was in February. Congratulations. You look like a million bucks. Thanks very much. I, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to see my chiropractor this afternoon, and I have an appointment with an eye doctor next week. But, you know, that kind of comes with the territory. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I feel great. Mm -hmm. I really feel great. And um, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think I, I had mentioned to you, uh, I'm, uh, and this is just a possibility. Mm -hmm. So this, I, I think it's important to maintain possibility. So I think it, when, when you get jammed into something and you feel like there's no way out, you only have, you know, that's when work becomes drudgery, mm -hmm. uh, day to day and so forth. Um, I, I think it's important to uh, 
stretch out a little bit and uh, look at other opportunities and possibilities. So anyway, I don't know, I don't even know where it came from, but uh, recently I got this idea that uh, I could live in an RV mm -hmm. or a travel trailer yep. as a possibility. And now, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do this, but as soon as I got that idea, I thought, wouldn't that be great? And I, and I really uh, started feeling uh, enthusiastic. So whether or not I do it, I think it's just good to uh, investigate these other possibilities. So the idea would be just really kind of divest myself of all my things and uh, uh, hit the road with my wonderful other half, Mila. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, we could travel and uh, come back a couple times a year, maybe more, I don't know. But uh, stay on the road. And uh, the interesting thing is I've been on YouTube. I've been staying up way too late watching YouTube videos. And there are people who do this. And they just go from place to place. Some of them stay in a place for six months. Some of them just stay overnight here and there. And, you know, you might have a larger goal. So one of my goals is to, you know, I want to go see the Grand Canyon. I, yeah. I guess everybody does. So I want to do that and then head out to the West Coast, maybe go up to Canada and... Uh, so I've been thinking about that, and uh, I think we're going to give it a try this summer and maybe go out in an RV for a week, and then maybe uh, in the winter we'll go out for a month or something. So maybe give All that right. a try. So yeah. I want to ask you a question. So you're 70 years old. You came up with this. This idea hit you. Light bulb went off. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first uh, impulse to you wasn't like, oh, I'm too old for this, right? Oh, no. No. So Not it was like, all. this is a great idea. And you got right. excited. You said it got, got you kind yeah. of like your blood pumping. Yeah. Now... You know, just a little background on you. Uh, it's not like you've been a single guy your whole life and just uh, experiencing things. You're, you're a businessman. You own a business. Uh, you have uh, you have four kids, right? Four kids. Yeah, all adults. Th three grandchildren. Yep. And another one on the way. So actually, this is the this is probably uh, the biggest part of the problem, if if you will. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the problem is, I, I like my life too much the way it is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy. I like where I live. I live not far from here in Middleton. And, uh, you know, we've got our bird feeders over there. I have a motorcycle in the shed. We take the motorcycle out every now and then. Um, I uh, have my business, uh, home inspections, and really enjoy that. I have a lot of friends. Uh, in the industry, realtors that I know and people that I've done home inspections for and so forth. Uh, I, and I just, I love that. Not to mention my family. I've got four really terrific kids. My youngest, uh, youngest guy, uh, Eric, uh, is graduating from law school in, uh, next year. My two daughters have uh, great careers, uh, both uh, business school graduates. And my oldest son, lives in Andover and uh, he's got two boys and he works with me. He's a home inspector. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we all, we just all get along great. There's no drama. Uh, there's no problems. Uh, this is just a lot of love and really terrific. And my, my two grandsons are, are uh, in sports. My, uh, Lucas, my, the seven year old, uh, is, uh, he's going to be playing 50 hockey games next year. Uh, He's been playing hockey for a couple of years. The other one's just uh, coming along playing soccer and baseball. And my granddaughter, Penny, is just a delight. Mm -hmm. On top of it all, Rachel, my oldest daughter, is having uh, a little boy uh, in the fall. So there you go. That's wonderful. So it's, it's hard to just say, oh, yeah, I think I'll just leave town forever. Yeah, I'm just going on a trip. Just I'll be back whenever. Yeah. Right. So... You know, it's just it's just an idea. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it's got my blood going. Yeah. So, but but it, but that that's what we're talking about. Like, um, you're 70 years old. Uh, I'm 50, going to be 51. Um, I think it's easy to get complacent in life and just say I can't. Right? I can't do that. But how do you like go? How do you keep? How do you keep yourself like in a good uh, frame of mind? All right. As the years roll by, because it's easy to go, oh, my God, what's happening? Well, that, you know, that's really a good question. And I, I don't I don't know that there's a real answer. I don't, I don't have any formulas. I'm just still trying to work it all out. Mm -hmm. and, I, and maybe that's part of it. That's part of what 
I think, uh, keeps people uh, youthful, uh, to not get stuck in an idea when you think you know everything, whatever it is. Uh, I've just been curious about things my whole life. I don't have the answers for, for anybody, really. Uh, uh, and uh, even for myself, I've just tried a lot of different things. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, my sister Nancy uh, posted something on uh, Facebook yesterday that I thought was really uh, very interesting. And it was two circles. There's a little circle, let's say a little circle the size of a dime, and another circle maybe the size of a softball. Yeah. And the circle, the size of a dime, inside it, inside it was written um, your comfort zone, the size of a dime. And the softball, inside that softball-sized circle, it says where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that comfort zone can be really limiting. And I'm inclined to, uh, I, I could very easily spend most of my life in my very comfortable recliner, which isn't that far from the refrigerator. <laughs> and uh, just, uh, I could watch CNN and just yell at the TV all day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I could probably do that. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's, it's just not very satisfying. And I, I've done it for periods of time, believe me. It's not, it's not the best way to live. Uh, so the alternative, I believe, is to, uh, you have to step outside that, that comfort zone and uh, step into that area where the magic happens, I yeah. guess, you know. And one way I do that is I don't listen to myself all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I were to listen to myself, uh, I, I wouldn't speak to strangers. Uh, I definitely would not be on your show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, th this afternoon I'm going to a... Uh, a seminar. It's a three-day uh, uh, retreat out in Barrie, Massachusetts at the uh, uh, Barrie Center for Buddhist Studies. Now, mm -hmm. I've never been to anything exactly like that. I've done a lot of other things in my life, as you know, uh, but uh, this is something new to me. And the reason I'm doing it is the same reason that I'm here today, and it's because a friend asked me to. And I am inclined to say, no thanks to, yeah. to most things. But uh, sometimes you just have to step out, out of your comfort zone. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. And this seminar that I'm going to, uh, incidentally, is entitled, uh, uh, I believe it's called uh, uh, Moving Forward, uh, Wisdom and Aging. Yeah. So it's about, you know, getting old. Yeah. And uh, I think there's, uh, it, it, I think if you want, to, uh, want it to be interesting, you have to engage it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody, if you're lucky enough to, to get old, and let's face it, we, yeah. we all know people who haven't been so fortunate yeah. to get old. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, maybe they have uh, serious health issues or whatever. So I think you really have to, uh, you have to be grateful. Just be, have a lot of gratitude for where you are and be willing to try new things. Now, you had said... Uh, we talked a little bit before how, you know, gr growing old, can you can look at it and say, this is terrible. Or you, one of the things you said was, it's just what happens. It's just, it's just life. This is just progression, just moving forward, right? Exactly. So uh, it's going to happen one way or another. Yeah. And along with it, uh, you know, I have my, I've been wearing uh, glasses for reading since, uh, geez, I guess it was probably about 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I just wear them when I'm reading. And now it turns out I think I'm going to need like real glasses and I'm going to see the eye doctor next week. But there you go. So you make those kind of adjustments. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of adjustments, I'm going to the chiropractor this <laughs> afternoon. He does a terrific job and gets me straightened out. But, uh, you know, sometimes we need a little extra help to get along. These things happen. And it really, uh, I believe it's just uh, your approach to these things. It's, it's I think, uh, for me, one of the things that's really worked in my life, probably more than anything I'd say, is acceptance. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, things are what they are. Uh, however, you do have uh, an opportunity to, uh, let's say, put it in perspective. So. Uh, Whatever it is, that's what it is. If you, if you, 
you can rebel all you want, or you can get angry about it all you want, but it's still the way that it is. And I think that, uh, that for me, I really stay stuck when, I, when I'm like that. Yeah. When I embrace things and just engage it, and you know, I seem to be able to move ahead. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I have to agree with that uh, very much. It's like one of the things that's hard, uh, obviously, is when you look in the mirror and you don't look like you did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Everybody wants to look. Speak for yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just All saying. right. Oh, let me just speak for myself. <laughs> no, but like. No, you, I understand. You're not yeah. 25. I'm not 25 anymore. And you can't. No matter how much you dye your hair and and shoot Botox and and get uh, wh wh whatever you do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of that stuff. But you're never going to be 25 again. So you have to age gracefully with acceptance. But you should take care of yourself too, though. Mm -hmm. That's important. You can't just. Oh, yeah. You can't just say, oh, oh what can I do? Right. Now, uh, that can lead us into our next segue, <laughs> because what is one thing that every, yeah, I can say every, but the majority of people deal with is like, how do I lose some weight? You know, I want to get into shape. Now, I know that you had that struggle for many years. You, though, have had like two very successful, solid years uh, of, of bettering yourself, right? So... You were how much? <clears throat> a lot. A lot. You were a, a lot. Well, I, but, but seriously, how much weight have you lost? Oh, you lost it, by the way, in, in, a, in how long? Well, it'll be two years in, in July. That you've kept it off. Yeah. So I yeah. started, I uh, embarked on this uh, adventure here and, you know, trying to drop some weight uh, two years ago two in, years in ago. July. And now it's the end of, middle of June. But I, uh, I came to a point where uh, I had two pairs of pants left. And one of them had holes in it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so they were like work pants, good pants, that was it. The rest of them didn't fit me. I had plenty of pants, lots yeah. and lots of pants. Mm -hmm. So anybody who gains weight and goes up and down and stuff, they have a lot of pants because yeah. you always have pants that don't fit you. Yep. And, uh, but I got to that point where I had two left and those, there were these uh, Eddie Bauer pants with the elastic waistband sure, and, and they were just, that was, I was maxed out. And I, I got, I just said, wow, I've, I've, re I've had it with this. And so I was going to embark on my uh, usual low carb uh, adventure where mm -hmm. I always had some success, but always put it back on. Anyway, uh, uh, Mila, and we knew some people that had done uh, Weight Watchers, so yeah. just to give the... You know, yeah. I'm just going to mention it by name because I, I, I liked it so much. Um, but uh, she said, why don't, why don't you go to Weight Watchers? I said, I don't know. She said, I'll, I'll go with you. I said, okay, great. So uh, we went to a meeting. And at that meeting, it was a Sunday morning, and uh, there was a, a young woman, uh, and uh, she uh, happened to share that she had lost 45 pounds. And I thought, wow, if I could do that, that would really, that'd be a miracle. Mm -hmm. That would real, I mean, that would be absolutely incredible. And uh, I said, geez, I'd love to do that. So anyway, they have the technology. It's, uh, you know, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we, we follow the program. Basically, we eat a lot of fresh food. Yeah. We don't eat stuff out of a box anymore. Yeah. Very few cans. So, so fresh food is fresh meat? Salads, salad. vegetables, fresh meat, yeah. fish, and in proportion. Yeah. And you kind of track what you eat, which sounds like a real burden and a problem. It does. It sounds, it sounds so incredibly boring. It's, it's so, it, honestly, yeah. it's simple. Yeah. And, but the, the thing is, the results are amazing because I, I've lost uh, 45 pounds. Yeah. So my goal was to lose 50 pounds. So this is how I can be about it, okay? Uh, basically, I lost that in the first year, 45 pounds. Yeah. So I, that was great. Excellent. But my goal has been to lose 50. Uh -huh. So I get down pretty close to it, and then I go up, and then so basically I've been maintaining. And sometimes I look at that and I go, geez, I, I just can't seem to get down to that goal. And then... Uh, it occurs to me, hey, uh, guess what? You lost 45 pounds. You got lots of pants that fit you now, and you feel great. Uh, so uh, it's been a tremendous success. I enjoy the people. Um, uh, it's, it's much better than I 
ever dreamed. I, you know, it's just, it's just been, been great. There, there is that, un, un, that, that unexpected satisfaction that comes from, from, from uh, losing weight. Uh, there's also that unexpected satisfaction that comes from when you eat properly, you feel so much better. Because I know that when I'm stressed, I want, I, I, I start thinking about like, I want to, I'm going to eat this, I oh, think yeah. I'm going to have that. And the whole satisfaction is in the thinking about it. Once you eat it, minutes later, usually you don't feel good because it's not usually a very good choice or you eat too much. So now there's a tremendous dissatisfaction afterwards. Now, when you eat properly and you eat healthy, it, it tastes good and you feel so good afterwards. So it's actually the opposite effect of what you think it's going to be. Like when you're eating out of uh, discomfort, um, you think it's going to make you feel better, it makes you feel worse. Uh, but you think that if I eat healthy in proportion, I won't feel good. But you do. It does. It, it just seems like it, this is another example of, for me, uh, stepping out of my your comfort, uh, comfort zone. zone. Yeah. I mean, honestly, did, did I want to go to a, a Weight Watchers meeting? No. No, no. you were a complete no for that. I right? was a complete zero, but I was also a complete no for, uh, I didn't want to buy the next size larger pants. <laughs> I just said no. So really, I mean, that's what it was for me. I had to do that. So wait, I want to ask yeah. you a question. Let's just go back a second. Mm. Now, we all know Weight Watchers works. We know that South Beach diet works. We know that low carb, we know all those diets work. Diet exercise, it's very simple, right? Mentally, though, that's what it is. You get a reason. Something hit, clicks in your head and you go, I want to do something. Mm. Now, uh, Weight Watchers wasn't your choice. It was suggestion to you. Right? So you got to a point where you had two pairs of pants left. You didn't want to get the next size up. You probably just didn't even want to buy big pants anymore, right? You know, obviously, there's a lot more to yeah. this than two pairs of pants. Right. Yeah, that was so kind the, of... Look, just, yeah. th that's what I just want to yeah. talk about just for a second. Yeah. Because your commitment isn't because you only have two pairs of pants right. left. It was one thing, and it's funny. It's a good story. Yeah. But you decided, like, like it wasn't the first time you tried to lose weight, right? Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what was always like a goal, a weight loss goal for you, 10 pounds, 15 pounds? Because to me, in my mind, I'm always like, I want to lose 10 pounds. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think anybody who's trying to drop some weight, you know, if you lose 10, 15 pounds, it's just, you know, that's phenomenal. Yeah. The, the other part of this is uh, I started walking. Yeah. So uh, you have to get up and move. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that either. So, I yeah. mean, I really didn't want, and I've done it in the past. I used to run, you know, years ago. And then uh, I stopped and... That was that. But I, I ran regularly for probably 30 years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I started walking and um, I walked five miles. Uh, you know, I'm out there for an hour and a half. And, and I don't do it every day. I did do it every day. Now, um, you know, maybe a couple times a week or something like that. It depends on my schedule. Mm -hmm. And I've been uh, busy with work lately. Uh, so other things. That happens. But the other thing is you can get right back into it the problem you know you said anybody uh, uh when you're talking about the diets and so forth uh, uh they all work but i don't i'm not so sure about that mm -hmm. i think that people have the best of intentions and you can get on board with some kind of a program and say uh great i'm gonna i'm gonna do this for a while uh, but uh, i i am v very reluctant to admit now I'm, I, I'm better at it now, but I'm, re, I'm originally very reluctant to admit I need help and I need, su and I need support. And, you know, for a guy, uh, any guy probably, sometimes it's hard to admit that. Yeah. I went through that with, you know, just to digress for a minute. I, I don't want to confess all my sins here, but years ago I used to drink a lot. Yeah. And I haven't had a drink in almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I'm not just taking all the credit for that. I mean, that was just like, that was a problem yeah. years ago. And, uh, you know, I got that out of the way. So, you know, you, there's another way to look at this. You might say, wow, th how can this guy have any fun? He doesn't drink. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't go out for fried clams anymore. all his food. I feel pretty good. I ride my <laughs> motorcycle. I, I walk. I play golf. I joined yeah. a golf league. Yeah. Uh, playing golf a couple times a week. I work every day mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy my work. My work's physical. Yeah. And uh, uh, enjoy playing with my grandchildren, yeah. sometimes a little too much. That's yeah. why I'm going to the chiropractor. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> they were over at the house for Father's Day, and 
you know, I think that I can still do circus tricks with them. Yeah. So standing on my shoulders, two of them, and all, all that stuff. Well, it's just a bad idea, but I seem to forget. Oh, you suffered a little injury. But let's go. But that's a good point, though. Is like you're you're vibrant. You're working every day, playing with your grandkids. Lost the weight. You feel good, and you're having a great time. Completely contrary to what, say, 40 years ago, you thought was a good time, right? Oh, absolutely different. And and I we go to our uh, Weight Watchers meeting on Sunday mornings. And it's like church, you know. <laughs> we just go. It's a half hour. Uh, we've made a lot of friends there, and uh, it's you know it's just going there. And I can't tell you exactly how it works. You you could guess and say, oh, it's about the support, the ba ba, whatever it is. Let me just say it's something that actually works because uh, I think the statistics say most people who lose any weight don't keep it off. No. And then it, no. the chances of you keeping off weight for uh, more than a year are almost minuscule. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is something that, that works pretty well. But wouldn't you say there's a little spirituality in there? There's something spiritual about the whole thing we're talking about here. Like, you, I know you kind of joke that it's like, you know, the, the, when, when I say spiritual, I don't mean like religious, but there right. has to be something more than just physicality in life. That's why people turn to things to make them feel better. They'll eat too much. They'll drink too much. You know, they'll gamble. They'll do all the things that they think will make them feel better. But there has to be some sort of like inner like peace that comes over you that, can, that, that you can keep weight off for two years. You know, that you can feel good. That you can have an idea to go and, hey, I want to get an RV and go across the country, right? I mean, am I right or am I wrong? I mean, tell me. Well, you know, I, I, w I would tend to agree. I think that, for me, that's almost like a whole other subject, and I have a lot of interest in those things. Uh, I'm not a religious person, um, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I, I believe, uh, I think I am uh, uh, probably belong to the Church of Empathy, where, yeah. you know, I think it's important to... Uh, treat people right, mm -hmm. uh, done the best I can, and uh, I think, uh, you know, everyone should really do that. Yeah, not, not a lot of empathy I I in this day and age. No, it doesn't seem to be. It's a At little, least not it's, on the surface. It's, 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 discour you know. it's discouraging. Yeah. I think there's a lot of fear, Sure. and I don't know if those two things can coexist. I think sometimes you have to be open. Yeah. You know, I think it's better to be open. Uh, I'm sure some people might disagree with that, but... Uh, I think uh, the more open and accepting you are, I think the better you're going to be. And well, that, this will be our next show. We're going to segue into the next show. This show is all about Fantastic. Hack, hack Pop <laughs> <laughs> and his, his uh, a transformational weight loss. Uh, what, what else? What other things like would you say like give you great happiness? Actually, you know what? What would you say like your purpose is at this point in your life? Uh, I'd like to improve my golf game. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> my my purpose is really uh, I feel fulfilled because I think because I've got such wonderful children and grandchildren. Uh, I love my life with Neela. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just very happy together. We're just very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after I, I've I've just done a lot of things over the course of my lifetime, and I feel that at this time, I really enjoying things the way they are, and I'm open to new possibilities. Well, it's definitely, you are definitely the happiest I've ever known you. So you are always making the step forward, step up. Uh, you're an inspiration to me. You really are. You're a great friend, and uh, I want to thank you for being on my show today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's always great to be with you. All right. Well, this brings the uh, to a conclusion another Matt Lagore show. You can check me out on uh, YouTube, uh, the Matt Lagore show on YouTube. I have other episodes there. You can also go to mattlagore.com, which will bring you to my Facebook page where I have uh, other stories and other things there. So I want to thank you for watching the Matt Lagore show. We'll see you next time.